The Night Beat starts right now. New on the Night Beat, a San Antonio doctor says life just got easier for women seeking birth control because it will soon be available on store shelves and online. The Night Team's Camelia Juarez has an overview of the over-the-counter birth control pill and the impact this could have on millions of people. This medication is very similar to the one that we uh, give to, to patients that are breastfeeding. So it is as safe as someone who's breastfeeding their baby. UT Health San Antonio and University Hospital gynecologist Dr. Gabriel Medrano says Opil, the first over-the-counter birth control pill in the U.S., is safe and effective. Plus now, it's convenient. It should make their life easier uh, if that's their decision. Sometimes patients cannot get in into a, to see a physician for many, many reasons, uh, busy schedule, uh, lack of insurance. Dr. Medrano says people with breast cancer or people with a history of blood clotting shouldn't take the pill. He recommends seeing a doctor right away if you notice abnormal bleeding. The FDA approved the drug for all women of reproductive age, including teenagers. Some question whether it will be safe. I feel a little bit sad because, you know, women are left with that option as their last resort, really. Dr. Medrano says pill may not be for everyone. Actually, it's a case by case. Uh, in that moment, especially if the patient is young, that should be um, discussed with the family and also the physician. Overall, Dr. Medrano believes this recent approval from the FDA is a victory for women's health care. Having this medication available is another way of empowering uh, our patients. Now, for more information, talk to your health care provider. The cost of the pill has not yet been released, and it won't be on store shelves until early next year. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Camelia. A family is safe but looking for somewhere to stay a few nights after fire damaged their home. It happened at a house near Nacogdoches Road in 1604 around 3 this afternoon. The fire started at the bottom of the pillar in the front of the home, then spread to the attic where it caused most of the damage. Right now, fire officials indicate a discarded cigarette could have sparked the fire. Investigators say the family should be able to move back into the house in the next two days. In just a few hours, a portion of Highway 211 in West Bear County will close so CPS Energy can install some new power lines. The part of 211 that intersects Calabra Road will be closed starting at 7 o'clock in the morning for those crews to work. Officials say the new lines are needed because the current ones are getting too old. CPS says the work should be done by noon. For more information on this closure and more road projects that could impact you around the Alamo City, just look for this story on our website at ksat.com. And first responders, their families and friends gathered tonight to celebrate another year of the San Antonio 100 Club with the 25th annual Spaghetti Dinner Fundraiser. This annual event raises money each year to support first responders here in the Alamo City. Big event every year. Last year, the club sold more than 6,500 plates. This year, their goal is to sell 7,000. Among tonight's festivities was the ninth edition of the 100 Club's Meatball Eating Contest. For the first time ever, the San Antonio Fire Department going home as the winners. San Antonio 100 Club President Richard Miller says the fundraiser goes so much deeper than just the annual dinner. When you come support the spaghetti dinner, you're supporting our first responders and their mission and their families. If you missed out on all the festivities tonight, you can still swing by tomorrow afternoon and evening to get a taste at the Christopher Columbus Society Banquet Hall. That'll be from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Police are still searching for a man they say shot someone randomly at Hemisphere Park. It happened in the Yanawana Garden section of the park around 6 this morning. Police say the victim was sitting down when shots were fired and he was hit. Thankfully, he's expected to recover, but officers still don't have any suspect information or know what triggered this random act of violence. Hemisphere Park released a statement saying they're aware of the incident and are working with park police in the investigation. A 22 year old man is fighting for his life tonight in a hospital after being shot five times in an apartment complex. It all happened in the 2000 block of Oak Hill Road on the city's west side just after 11 o'clock this morning. An officer at the scene says the man was shot in his arms, legs and stomach. Police say the suspect was wearing all black clothes with a black mask. A man was detained for questioning near the scene, but we have not yet confirmed if he was the suspect. 
The victim was taken to University Hospital and is in critical condition tonight. Another man is recovering after he was shot in the leg Friday night. This incident happened on Raymond Street in between Nogalitos and I-10. Police say the victim was taken to the hospital after knocking on doors in the neighborhood trying to find help. Police were unable to track down the shooter and have not released any information about a possible suspect. In an effort to promote responsible gun ownership in Bear County, the County Commissioner's Court is introducing the Gun Safety for Bear Initiative. It will focus on gun safety and improving community security. Along with University Health, the Commissioner's Court will take steps to prevent accidental gun discharges and unauthorized access to firearms, especially when it involves children. To start, the county is giving away 3,800 handgun safes and 1,000 handgun cable locks free for charge, uh, free of charge to gun owners. These gun safes and gun lo locks are just an additional layer of safety to try and keep our kids safe. Nearly $150,000 for that program is being provided through the American Rescue Plan Act. A record-breaking day today in South Texas, and we're looking outside live right now with our live cam, and it's just the summertime heat we're dealing with this time of year. Dog days of summer. We made it to 104, the high temperature this afternoon. That's a new record high by 2 degrees. The average high, by the way, is 95. We're not going to be near that anytime within the foreseeable future here. Del Rio topped out at 106, Catula up to 109 today. New Braunfels had a high of 106, even Kerrville 103. I do think more records are going to fall. We'll be back to talk about that along with a little glimmer of hope for a pattern change and maybe some rain chances way in the extended forecast. We're going to get to that and take a look at when you'll notice some Saharan dust in a bit. Thank you, Adam. Now record or near record breaking temperatures have millions of Americans under heat alerts and severe storms are disrupting travel in Chicago. Yeah, and in the south, new air quality alerts have been issued because of the Canadian wildfire smoke. ABC's Mola Lenghi updates us on severe weather tracking across the country. More than 90 million Americans are bracing for more brutally hot temperatures. 16 states from Washington to Florida are under heat alerts. In California, Sacramento under an excessive heat warning through the weekend. Further south in Death Valley, despite warnings from officials to stay away, tourists are flocking to the hottest place on earth as temperatures could reach 130 degrees for only the sixth time on record Sunday. Phoenix, Arizona has seen 16 consecutive days of temperatures above 110 degrees. Volunteers handing out water and cool towels, as well as shoes to protect against the hot pavement. I'm not one that's going to write my congressman. I want to be right out in the field. I want to see the impact that I'm making. Texas has seen triple digit temperatures for nearly a month. The state seeing an uptick in heat related illness and the power grid is feeling the strain amid record energy use. On Sunday, Las Vegas is forecast to potentially reach the city's all time high temperature of 117 degrees off the coast of Florida, a marine heat wave with water temperatures well into the 90s. And it's not just the heat impacting the country. Travelers at Chicago's O'Hare Airport had a shelter-in-place order earlier in the week because of severe storms. We are being put shelter-in-place. As the country continues to see these hotter temperatures, the excessive heat is among the issues being negotiated between UPS and its drivers, the union asking for air-conditioned trucks. They pound down uh, cool solutions a lot, so they want us to pull over, get in the shade, and that but they get yeah, they get on us again because we're too we're taking too long meanwhile as those wildfires continue to burn in canada air quality alerts in effect from montana to kentucky mola Lenghi, abc news las vegas still ahead on the night beat keeping the people and the product cool it is a daily struggle some businesses are facing in the extreme heat coming up how one san antonio ice cream shop is keeping its supply cold and energy use low. Plus, adding to a history of lower scores, we go behind the kitchen door of two restaurants for a second time. Plus, going on strike, actors across the country have joined writers and are off the job. But what they want to see from the big movie companies and how this could affect the economy next. Hollywood on strike. Actors have joined the picket lines with the Writers Guild as they fight for more compensation and protections from major movie industry changes. ABC's Serene Shaw in Los Angeles tells us where the strike stands.
Day two of Hollywood actors joining writers on strike, bringing the entertainment industry to a halt. We are speaking on behalf of workers all across the nation and around the world. The eyes of workers are upon us. Picketers yesterday stretched across the entrances of major studios, from Hollywood and L.A. to New York City. Many movie and TV productions from Wednesday to upcoming Marvel films like Deadpool 3 indefinitely delayed, while House of the Dragon, whose cast is mostly British and not part of SAG-AFTRA, may continue filming. Actors are looking for better residual pay and higher wages for streaming shows and protection of their likeness from the use of AI. These issues largely affecting actors barely making living wages. You are typically having to uh, work a second job uh, in order to uh, subsidize your income. I was living check to check, let's just be honest. I had a friend who lived in his car for a year. And the strike potentially crippling the Los Angeles economy that relies so heavily on Hollywood. Forbes estimating the cost could top three billion and thousands of jobs. A Hollywood production brings a lot of money to a lot of different businesses. We're talking hotels, we're talking restaurants. So there's going to be a huge economic impact from this strike. A far, far reaching impact. As for the association representing the studios and streamers, they say they offered actors historic pay and residual increases and AI protections for actors' digital likeness. But that offer was not accepted. Zoreen Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. Back here at home, well after 10 o'clock, still above 90 degrees. Yeah, we're breaking records here in Texas. Yeah, not the good kind of <laughs> records either. No, we don't like these. I'd, I'd rather break like a record low temperature. Yeah. That'd be okay. nice to have for a <laughs> change, that. right? Or maybe break a record to have a first snowfall like in July. No, let's not get crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fine. Let's just move on then and deal with reality out there. We're feeling the heat and it's going to continue. 104, 105, give or take, basically, over the next seven days. But I do want to point out, we, do, we are expecting some record highs to fall. Again tomorrow and then Tuesday and then as we get into Friday, we are forecasting to meet or exceed those record highs. Tomorrow, the record high is 103. We're expecting 104 again. You look at the high temperatures today across the nation and yeah, it's July. We've got the heat, especially the heat high over the southern and southwestern U.S. Of course, that includes us. The high is anchored over California and Nevada, but it's nosing its way into our neck of the woods, so it's still influencing our weather and it's going to continue. There is some cooler air out there, and that was up in Canada, North Dakota, in northern Minnesota today. Look at these high temperatures. And by the way, I love some of the city names in Canada. I just, I can't, I can't resist. Pickle Lake, 68 degrees. Pickle Lake, Ontario, ever been. Uh, Big Trout Lake, 66. Flin Flon, Manitoba. 58 for the high temperature today. Actually, an unseasonably cold air mass is in place and it's dipping down into the Great Lakes states. So they've got some below average temperatures over the next couple of days with that cool low. We've got the heat high. They've got the cool low out there. And overall, when you look at the pattern here going forward, our heat high is going to be sliding eastward again. But then there are indications that it's going to push westward in the extended forecast. We're talking by this time next week and even thereafter, eight, nine, ten days from now, indications are that this upper level heat high will really just anchor itself over the western U.S. and even push all the way up into Canada, build northward. What that does for us, the significance is this northerly flow aloft up above us in the atmosphere, the steering flow is going to come out of the north. That doesn't mean really cool temperatures. It's not going to change our temperatures a lot, but it opens the door for disturbances and even some leftovers of North Texas and Oklahoma thunderstorms. So there's a glimmer of hope for slight rain chances beyond seven days. Just a glimmer of hope, nothing to get excited about, but we'll keep you updated. Let's talk about the Saharan dust. If you had a really high vantage point today, say one of the big flyover ramps and you looked way off into the distance, you may have noticed a little bit of a haze, but it wasn't all that noticeable. Just very light amounts of Saharan dust in the air today. 
tomorrow closer to the Gulf Coast line for the most part. And then we get into next week and the dust is going to be pretty thick over the Gulf of Mexico, but we'll just get clipped by light amounts the middle part of the week on Wednesday. I don't think you're really going to notice it all that much, especially if you just look directly upward. And if you are sensitive to that dust, I don't think you'll have any issues with it. Different story, though, in the Caribbean, Cuba and parts of South Florida. All right, tomorrow early morning, 78 degrees by sunshine or by at the afternoon, 104 with plenty of sunshine. Here's the key, though. Our afternoon dew points are finally dropping off a little bit now that we've dried out from the sun baking us for five, six weeks straight. So the feels like temperature only a few degrees warmer than the air temperature. We're avoiding those excessive heat indices in the one tens. So we've got that going for us at least. It's a bonus. Rio Medina 104 and it'll feel like it's closer to 104, maybe up to 106 in the afternoon. Converse the same. New Braunfels about 105. Records likely to fall again Sunday, Tuesday and then again on Friday. Pickle Lake. You ever been Pickle Lake, Ontario? What about Flin Flon, Manitoba? <laughs> huh? I have not, but I'll put them on my list of places to visit. You need a sweatshirt this time of year now that would with be that fine air. With me. All right, Larry, uh, a Texas X making his Spurs an NBA Summer League debut. Yeah, so the Spurs really like this kid, Sir Jabari Rice, a former Texas Longhorn basketball player, but he had some health issues that held him out until last night, and young man put on a nice show. Plus, Big Marv was all kinds of pumped up to host his first football camp coming up. It felt real good to actually start playing again. Uh, it felt good just to be in the floor of the game, uh, just the excitement of the game. My opinion, Sir Jabari Rice is back to playing basketball, and the young man is thrilled in big board sports. Texas X Sir Jabari Rice made his Spurs an NBA Summer League debut yesterday in San Antonio's 79-73 loss to the Detroit Pistons in Las Vegas. And Rice looked pretty good and played efficiently after sitting out the summer due to low iron levels in his blood, as reported by Tom Orsborne of the Express News. In 16 and a half minutes off the bench, Rice posted 11 points, two rebounds, one assist, one block shot, and a game high, three steals. He shot 50% from the floor, making four of eight field goal attempts. During post, he was asked, how does he feel right now about his perimeter shooting? I think I'm in a good spot. Um, I've had about three, four weeks off, so I haven't, been, I haven't played five on five like that in like three, four weeks. So uh, it was good to see one go through. Uh, but I really came out and I, I didn't try to score, try to get back to where I was. I just tried to play in the, in the, in the means of the game and, and just try to get a win ultimately. And uh, we were on track for that, but we came up short. But it's okay. I think we uh, got better today. Um, guys understand different things. Uh, we got to talk a little bit more to each other. Uh, but it was just ultimately good to be back. It's crafty. <laughs> it's definitely crafty. He uh, finds ways to put the defense under pressure. And uh, you know what? He's, he's a good teammate. He's very communicative. It was like that uh, during when he wasn't playing. But now out on the court and on the bench, I thought he's yeah, good all-around basketball player, but good teammate too, which is great to have. Spurs guard Blake Wesley had an off night shooting, making just three of his 17 field goal attempts to finish with 10 points. Now, before the game at morning shoot around, he was asked his thoughts on Rice. Uh, he's a great defender, great person overall. Uh, he practiced yesterday with us for the first time. Uh, I've seen some of his highlights, so he's a great person, a uh, good player, uh, can play defense, can score, uh, team player, so that's what we need. CD Sissoko had six points in the loss, highlighted by this monster slam dunk in the fourth. That got his teammates off the bench and all kinds of pumped up. All right, so the Spurs will close out their stay in Las Vegas tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. when they play the Thunder at the Cox Pavilion. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. The heat and humidity this morning did not slow down. 80 kids from attending DeMar and Leal's first ever football camp. Leal held his camp at Judson High School at DW Rutledge Stadium, where he turned himself into a five-star recruit. So there's really no better spot for the big Ocho to teach these kids the game he loves and the sport that's given him so much. We went one-on-one -on -one with Leal right before camp started, and as expected, he was super pumped up to be back home and giving back to his community with the help of players like like Spencer Burford. Feeling amazing out here at Judson High School, just getting the kids ready to go, about to get them stretched out, and memories are coming back to me like faster than ever, but I'm loving it. Who do you have out here today? Uh, right now, we got Spencer, we got 
Darren Brown, we got Kevin Wood, we got Donnie Moody, and man, we got a couple more alumni that's gonna come back in a little bit, and we're gonna get these uh, young youth stretched out, ready to go and get some good work in. What do you want these kids to take out of this camp? That, you know what I'm saying, even on a Saturday, you can still come and get some work in and you know you can do it for your community you can do it for yourself it's just a matter of who you want to be and how you want to do it so this is happy that these kids came out to have fun and get some work in marv said it feels amazing to be a role model for those kids and at one point that was him as a kid attending camps liao who plays for the steelers and burford the 49ers will leave for training camp later this month and we have good news for pitcher bryce miller coming up later in sports Watch out, you almost got hit by that ball. I know. Right? Ooh. You keep your eyes open. <laughs> Those kids are so strong, too, and talented. They what are. an amazing opportunity yeah, for them. That old guy was really getting after it. All right, Larry, <laughs> we'll see you in just a bit. And coming up, a killer on the loose. Authorities in Georgia are looking everywhere for a man they say is responsible for the deaths of four people this morning. Everything we know about the situation coming up. But first, when we come back, Back again, two restaurants with a history of lower scores are back in the spotlight as we go behind the kitchen door to find out why. Welcome back. Two San Antonio restaurants with a history of lower scores found themselves with plenty of corrections to make after health inspectors found violations during their May inspections. And another restaurant may wish to go back in time to avoid their mistakes. I went on a trip behind the kitchen door that includes two repeat stops. SA Cafe, located in the 20,000 block of Highway 281 North, got a 77 on their recent inspection. That's a big improvement over the failing 66 they had last year when they were featured on Behind the Kitchen Door. They were told to stop using a cooler that wasn't cool enough. There were live roaches and unapproved chemicals in the kitchen, including residential grade pest control products and mothballs. Containers with food inside were stored on the floor. They also needed to do some cleaning and buy a new food permit or face being closed. I'm Tim with KSAT 12 News. I do behind yeah. the kitchen door. I wanted to follow up on your guys' yeah. recent inspection. You I stopped by this week to see if corrections had been made. The employee on duty was unable to answer my questions. Have you all gotten the updated uh, permit down here? Mm -hmm. Okay, I did see that back there. Um, and then there was a roach issue. Wait, I, I called it with my boss. He called his boss, who also had to call someone higher up. Oh, you, you work at um, 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 uh, the, the government? No, no, no. I'm with KSAT 12, the TV station. We were just following up to see what happened. Uh, hold, hold on. Let, 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 let me call my boss, too. Hold on. No one called me back. I did see the new permit was posted, but the business still had not posted a copy of the current inspection report. <laughs> this tattered flag welcomes guests to bombshells in the 8400 block of Highway 151. They had a 79 last time we featured them. This time around, they dropped down to a 78. They had to throw out moldy sauces in a cooler. No one was washing their hands. One worker even changed gloves without washing hands. Chemicals were stored next to clean, ready to serve plates. Several items in a cooler were a month past their expiration dates. Several areas of the kitchen also needed to be cleaned. 10 violations were corrected during the inspection. <laughs> Magic time machine in the 900 block of Northeast Loop 410 may wish they could go back in time to get a higher score. They were zapped with an 80. Food in a cooler that was out of temp had to be thrown out. Food containers stored as clean were still dirty. Several small roaches were seen emerging from a drain. Two kitchen staffers were handling food without being certified. Several areas needed to be cleaned. That's what's happening behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Happening around America tonight, four people are dead after a mass shooting in Georgia. And police say the man who did it is still on the run. Officers say 40-year-old Andre Longmore shot and killed three men and a woman this morning in Hampton, Georgia, in a neighborhood there, that town about 40 miles south of Atlanta. Right now, police say they don't know a motive to the crime, and they do consider Longmore armed and dangerous. Several agencies now assisting in that search.
Residents all over Vermont are bracing for another round of storms tomorrow as they try to dry out their homes and businesses damaged by historic flooding over the last week. Those storms last week are to blame for two deaths so far. Federal support for Vermont is on the way after the request was approved by President Biden yesterday. The Secretary of Transportation will also travel to Vermont on Monday to survey the damage and help figure out plans to rebuild. Former New Jersey governor and presidential hopeful Chris Christie has released his second quarter fundraising numbers. So far, he's raised more than one and a half million dollars from 40,000 different donors, which meets an important threshold. Having at least 40,000 donors makes him eligible to participate in the first Republican debate that will be held next month. But before he can appear in that, he must also register at least one percent in major national polls or polls from the early voting states. We'll see what happens there. Still to come on the night beat, struggling to keep cool. How a San Antonio ice cream shop is keeping its products cold in the extreme heat next.